welcome back to my channel um so um by the title of this video you guys are probably already know what i'm going to be talking about um so yeah we're going to get right on back into the video um i'm in the bathroom right now because um i was listening to music and stuff like that and i was reading a book and i just got out the shower or whatever but um this video really took me a lot to do um i don't want people to bash me in the comments that's why i was so afraid to do this video i don't want people to talk about me that's why I was afraid to do this video, but me being the person I am, me, it was just like, I need to do this because a lot of people has been asking what happened. So, we're going to go to this video. I'm probably going to cry, so if you guys see me cry, just, you know, be with the video. But I probably don't because I'm like stronger now. Um... But yeah, so I'm gonna tell you guys the day that my daughter died. Um, so it was May 15th. Um, I got up at seven o'clock and I had to go get Sorry about the noise. I got up at 7 o'clock. I had to go get my makeup done or whatever um, because we had a photo shoot. I want to put the pictures right here. Some of you guys probably seen the pictures on my Instagram, but I want to put it right here for you guys so you guys can see it. I'm going to have to go do a photo shoot. Um, so once I got my makeup done, I came back home. I picked my daughter up and I got her dressed or whatever and then we had to our photo shoot. We got to the photo shoot by 11 o'clock. Um, I did an hour photo shoot, so we finished around like... So 30-ish, 1 o'clock-ish. Um, and then once we finish the photo shoot, I end up going to McDonald's, getting her a Happy Meal because she loves Happy Meals. You guys know my daughter, she loves Happy Meals. So she ate her Happy Meal and then we went home. Um, so once we got home, we both changed our clothes or whatever. Um, and, you know, we, we was pretty much in for the house. We wasn't doing anything else because we was in for the day. So... Um, it was, I want to say it was around like three something. Um, my mom, husband, well, I was, I really planned on going to the store because I had makeup on. So I was going to get some makeup wipes to wipe the, the stuff, the makeup off my face. Um, and then my mom, husband was like, I'm going to go to the store because, um, my daughter needed some milk. I was like, okay, I will go because... I will go because I needed to get what I needed. So I'm like, okay. He was like, okay. So she asked me, she was like, mommy, can I go? And I was like, no, baby, stay here. Mommy, be back. So I went out the door and then one of my little brothers went out the door because we had this long little board because I was building something in my room and he had to go throw it out. So in the process of me and him being outside, we didn't see my daughter run outside. So... Um, I pulled off, I left, I went to the store. I was only going for like four minutes or not even four minutes. I was, I was like, like that. I went, I came back like that. So I came back inside. If you know my daughter, like when the door opened, she like run to you. Like she like run to you and like, Hey mommy, bye. So I didn't hear her. So I'm like, I'm asking everybody, where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Everybody was like, Oh, she's with one of her uncles. And I, I went in his room. I was like, Yo, or Aviana, and he was like, I don't know, she up there in the front. I was like, No, she not. My baby's not in the front. So everybody's looking for her. Everybody's looking for her, and I'm just like, Y'all, where's my daughter? So I already, I'm already panicking because I'm like, Oh my God, my daughter is lost. I don't know where she go. Um, but I want to jump back. My daughter can't get out the house unless she open the door because I have a um a child a child proof thing on the door we still have it today because of, of her dog that i bought her he tries to open it so we still have it on that we have not to get off yet so I, so she can't get out the house unless 
that thing is on but the thing is always on because she knows how to open the door so i ran to the back like so first we all all sound like aviana 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 and i didn't hear her response so i'm like what the fuck well, so i ran like so like how my house is you can go this side this side i ran on this side and i saw the pool like when i went to the back my first instinct was the pool and i was i ran over there so fast and i saw my baby in the pool like floating like this and i hurry up and grabbed her off the pool i was like oh my god my baby my fucking baby like i was literally just like oh my god my fucking baby in the fucking pool so my stepdad grabbed her out of my hand and he performed it was performing um cpr so at the time i'm already i'm having a panic attack i'm my anxiety got through i'm about to have a heart attack or whatever so i'm just like okay you gotta be strong i'm over here praying to god like god get my baby back to life get my baby back to life god if you love me get my baby back get my baby back so we end up calling that one when my um stepdad was in um he was i want to say the air force or the army or something so he was performing cpr on her um and i knew cpr but at the time i'm like okay i can't do it because this is my baby like i'm in shock so he did that and um all of a sudden when i walked back on the phone with when i was on the phone with the um emt i walked back over there and all of a sudden i seen the puke like come out so i'm like oh my god thank god thank god she's okay she's okay so we had a very very light pause so I'm like, okay, God, like I'm over here praying like, God, give me my baby back. I'll do anything for you. Just bring my baby back to life. Bring my baby down. Life. I would have to say my baby was in that water for at least four to five minutes. Now, it doesn't take a child that long to drown. Um, so, but how my baby was, she was floating. So I knew like she was trying to get out because my baby know how to swim, but she only know how to swim when she has her, her floaties on. But, um so like you can tell she was trying to struggle like you can tell the way she was in the pool you can tell how she was um trying to get herself out the pool um because how she was floating in the pool so you can see that she was trying to escape but couldn't really escape because of how how deep the water was so um so why are we getting the pause um the the mit the police the police came and he performed cpr as well and i'm over here shaking so i'm over here crying so they had to put an oxygen on me because i couldn't really breathe because i'm in shock so then the fire truck came or whatever and when they got there they was like oh we don't have a pause so they steady points they was just they they were still doing cpr on my baby as well and i'm just like i'm on my knees i'm on my knees right now i'm on my knees crying like god help me bring my baby back to life i'm sorry for everything i did just give me my baby back i just want my baby back i just want my baby back i'm over here crying to god like crying to god to bring me my baby back like i'm in tears on my knees crying to god to bring my baby back so um so then after that the police end up bringing me in the house and he was like oh we're gonna have to fly her out to um a children hospital that was in Orlando and I'm like okay but they had to fly her in a helicopter and it was like oh you can't ride so I'm the time I'm like why can't I ride with my baby like that's my baby I need to be by my baby just in case she wakes up so I remember you guys I stay in Kissimmee so Kissimmee is probably an hour and 30 minutes and remember we in rush hour time so we in a traffic time when we had to go to the hospital so we didn't get there to about 4 35 o'clock ish when we got to the hospital um so my dad like um so everybody's crying my little brother's crying everybody's crying like oh my god like you know everybody's really crying at this point everybody's like praying like bring my baby back to life bring my baby back to life so i'm just like oh my god like i'm shaking in the car i'm just like lord this can't be like you can't you can't take my baby away from me like you you just can't take my word like she's my world i need her so i'm just like um i have one of her blankets that i got her i still have it i have um her blanket that she got when she was a baby i still have it and it's still like it still have my makeup and everything on it i have not washed it yet so i'm in the car like oh my god like holding the blanket over there. so she's already a hospital um so why this all happening while i was about to get us a hospital i called my mom i was like mom whatever you do don't go to work go to this hospital so my mom was already on the road so my mom got there first and when she got there she was like oh they're not letting me in because i'm not i'm not the mother but i'm like how my mom already had her like insurance card or whatever 
and I'm just like, how are they not letting you in? And I'm like, it's weird. So I'm like, okay. I, I was like, okay, we'd be there like 20 minutes because we was like really, really close. So as we go in the hospital room, they go, the doc and the lady was like, oh, we're going to go get the doctors. I'm like, okay. So I'm just like, Lord, please don't let this be the news down you. Because you know when, you know when somebody die, they, they bring the doctors. Normally, they'll let you go in if your baby's okay. So at this point, they didn't let me go in the room. They took us in like a small room. And I, in my head, I'm like, Lord, please don't let them give me the news that I think they're about to give me. So the doctor come in. He was like, hi, are you the mother of Ibiana Sanders? I'm like, yes, I'm the mother. He was like, well, when she got here, she... Um, like her eyes was like in the back of her head so we already knew that she was kind of brain dead but we were trying to get her back we gave her all the medications we can get and this and this and that and he said I'm sorry we did everything we can to try to save Ibiana Sanders and I'm just like no all of a sudden I was like no what the fuck like I'm just I'm in a hospital fucking going crazy like no why y'all didn't save my fucking baby like no like I'm going crazy I'm like Lord why like why y'all didn't save my baby like why like that was my baby <laughs> like that was my baby like she was my world <laughs> I'm like I'm like in shock I'm like no like that's not a big girl like you can't, you can't kill my baby girl. Like, that's my baby. It's like, so I'm like, so you mean to tell me y'all did everything y'all could to get my baby back? And he was like, yes, we did everything we could. I was like, no, y'all didn't. Y'all didn't do that because she would still be here right now. And he was like, but you know, it only takes such and such amount of time for a baby to drown. I said, I don't give up. I said, I don't care. I said, when we pulled her out, she threw up everything that she ate and we had a light pulse. So you mean to tell me from the time she was in a fucking ambulance, from the time she was in a fucking helicopter, y'all couldn't get her fucking pulse back up. Like, I was going off on him. Like, I was really going off on him because I was just like, what the fuck? Like, y'all are not, y'all didn't get my baby back. And to this day, and to this day, I, like, no, no matter what, and to this day, I always... <laughs> Like, I feel like they didn't save my baby. Like, I feel like they didn't do enough to bring my baby back to this world. And they should have did more than what they could have done. But, um, so yeah, like, that's what really happened. Um, so ever since that happened, um, so that night I came home, I couldn't sleep. I called my boyfriend, I called my best friend, I called her grandma, like I called everybody, like my baby is gone, like my world is gone. And I was just like, to this day, I'm still in shock. Um, so the next day I end up going to a therapist, like I go to two therapists um, and I go to them two times a week. So I see, a I see a therapist every day and I see both of them, I see both of them two times a week so I'm all I'm already seeing a therapist um and like right I wasn't strong now I feel like I'm like strong like I can talk about what happened to my baby but at first I can't because as I think about everything that happened it was just still shock because if you know my baby you know she was my world I did everything in this world for her and for everything to go i was being guilty i was being guilty myself i was like oh i should have just took her with her why didn't i take her with me if i would have took her with me then she would have still been here i was feeling guilty i was blaming everybody that i shouldn't be blaming um i was still numb like my whole body was numb like the day after my body was just so numb i was going through depression I was going to do everything and that's why I see two therapists because I already had suffered from depression so I already I was already seeing a therapist about my depression so I go see her two times a week and then when that happened I had to go see like a mental therapist so like I see two therapists two times a week so like that's why you guys are probably like oh it haven't been that long since your baby passed um it's because I'm stronger than before like I 
and that's why I feel like I was strong enough to do this video. Um, it might be early, but with me reading and me meditating and me um, praying to God every night and me just like being strong and letting her see that mommy's okay down here, it built me to be strong enough to do this video for you guys. Um, no, I don't. I really hope y'all don't be hearing my comments like, oh, who was supposed to be watching her? So, y'all don't be Ruby. And so, like, don't be fucking rude because that's, like, really disrespectful for y'all to make comments like that. Um, and then you have people, the whole time everything happened or everything went down, you have people who's like, oh, anything you need, I'm going to be okay. And I'm just like... You can't bring my daughter back to this world, so how you mean to tell me you're going to be here by my side? If you can't bring my daughter back, don't never tell me you're going to be on my side. Like, I was just feeling so, I was just, I hate it. I hate it. I had hate for everybody who was saying, oh, it's going to be okay if you need anything. Like, I just, I just had so much hate because I'm just like, y'all can't bring me my baby back, so don't sit here and tell me. And... And people was like, oh, things going to get better. I just feel like if you never experienced losing a child or losing a mother or losing a, like a sibling, you don't know the pain that I suffer. You don't know the pain that I was going through. Like, I was having suicidal thoughts in my head because I'm just like, well, my baby's not here. Then who else am I going to be living for? Like, I was just having so many thoughts. And I'm just like, these people don't realize as a grieving mother is some things that you can't say because this mother don't care about what you're saying. This mother just want her child back. And I, so I was going through all of that and I thank God that my family came down and was here to support me through and doing everything. I thank God that my job helped me out with the funeral costs and everything because I didn't know how I was going to pay for my baby funeral. Um, I, w I was going to use my tax money, honestly. I was going to use my tax money, but my job helped me out with everything. And it hurts me that my daughter's not here. It still feel, I'm still shocked. But, cause she was only two and she has so much to live for, so much. And if you guys don't know, I always said that my daughter came into my life to make me a better person. Because when she wasn't here, I was just going through so much. I was just going through depression. I was going through anxiety. Oh, yeah. I didn't have... I, would, I just hated myself when she was... I hated myself when she wasn't here. Like, and then when I found out I was pregnant, I felt like my life did a 360. Um, I feel like God placed my daughter in my life to make me a better person. Um, as I think about the situation that happened to me, I feel like God sent her f for me for a reason and, and she accomplished it. And I was reading something and it said, God took your baby away because he needed he needed his angel the most and it started to hit me because I'm just like everything that I've been through in my life she doesn't have to experience that um so I'm to the point where I can be strong enough and be like okay my baby's in a better place she don't have to experience jealousy she don't have to experience hatred she don't have to experience sexual abuse like she don't have to experience everything that i experienced in my life because she's in a better place and i do wish she was still here because i was a wonderful mother to her and i wish i was able to raise her to the woman that i wanted her to be but um something that really been helping me doing this grieving process is reading like I read every day now um I meditate I write in my little journals um I have this journal and I just write like if I'm having a bad day or if I'm having a good day I write in it and let her know like mommy's okay like I just you know I just have like personal con like if I'm having a personal conversation with God I have personal conversations with her as well um but I also am in a lot of like I said I go to therapy I go to two therapies two times a day so i go monday tuesday and then i go 
Thursday, Friday. So each week, I'm seeing, I'm seeing therapists each week. So that has helped me a lot. Um, having my boyfriend on my side has helped me a lot. Um, I feel like me and him got stronger now. Um, he's been on my side. Um, all the prayers that everybody sent me. Um, being in, um, I'm in, an, I'm in, I'm in two of these, um, groups of mothers who lost their child. I'm in two groups of them. So we like to meet up. We like to, um, do Zoom calls, um, on Wednesdays, every, on Wednesday every week. So that has also helped me get through this process. Um, but I'm, I'm, I have my days where I'm missing her like crazy and then I have some days where I'm strong and I'm like okay well if she was here she wouldn't see me cry so you guys if you guys comment and be like oh you didn't cry you didn't love her only reason why I didn't have cry because I never cried around my daughter because every time I cried she would wipe my tears and be like mama it's going to be okay so I had to so some things if you didn't see me cry that's why I didn't cry because I'm strong like I'm strong I can do this video without crying so that's why I didn't that's why I didn't cry but um it this this situation made me stronger um they say God give his toughest battle to his strongest soldier and I believe this situation made me even more stronger and this situation going to make me grind even more harder because she was my motivation um like I told my therapist I felt like I was empty. I didn't have my motivation here anymore. But when I had that funeral for her, and when I saw my baby go in the ground, it started raining like hell. And all I remember when I was growing up, they say when it rains at a funeral or like at a cemetery, your baby made it to heaven. That's all I could remember. Like, dang, my baby made it to heaven and met God. Um, so. I know it's going to be a time in my life where I'm going to be blessed again and I'm going to be a mother again because you know me, all I ever wanted to be, be was a mother and a wife. And I thank God that he gave, he allowed my daughter to come in my life for two years and to spread that motherhood. Um, she's going to forever be my daughter, no matter if, she, even though she's not here physically, she's going to forever be my baby girl. She's forever going to be my sunshine. She's forever going to be my Tinkerbell. I'm forever going to be her mother. And it's going to be hard. And I know I just got to keep pushing myself to do better because she's looking down on me. And she's my guardian angel. So I'm going to be working my butt off to make her proud. Because if she was here, I would be working my butt off to make her proud. So I'm going to continue to do that. And her legacy is still going to live through me. I'm not going to forget my baby. Her legacy is still going to be here. But yeah, so um, that's what really happened, guys. So I really hope you guys going to be in my comments bashing me, saying some rude ass shit. Because if you are, I'm going to bash your ass right back. Point back, period. But I just want to say if it's mother that's out here grieving as well just it's going to be okay or if you, any mothers out here that went through something that i went through or going through something that i experienced comment down below because i have a lot of groups i have a lot of good therapies that can help you out get through this process because it's going to be hard but um i'm here with you if you experience this i'm here for you i'm here with you we can get through this together um i have a lot of moms that went through this together and we text every day non-stop we talk about 